Revelation 5, Psalm 139. The book written within and on the back side, sealed with seven seals. Let me show you um, what DNA looks like. Because that's what we were talking about last week. Um, it, it looks like a ladder when it's uncoiled. It's on. It's on, on, on. I have the thing going up and down. It's on, it's on, it's on. All right. It looks, it looks like a ladder when it's uncoiled. And it does get uncoiled normally when DNA is in the nucleus of your cell. It's rolled up just like a book. Tur uh, look at Ezekiel 2 and Ezekiel 3. Look at Ezekiel 2, verse 9. Because I don't have that on the screen, but I want to show you what this looks like. In Ezekiel 9, or Ezekiel 2, verse 9, this is, this is almost exactly like what happened with John. This is part of that, if you see something in the Old Testament, I guarantee you, you're going to see the rest of it in the New Testament. That's just how it works. There's a verse in Isaiah that says, Seek ye out the book of the Lord and read. No one of these shall fail, and none shall want her mate. Which means that for everything, it's like, it's like when Moses lifted up the serpent on a brass pole in the wilderness and told the Israelites, if you look upon it, if you've been bit by the serpent, you'll live. Well, Jesus then, there's a mate to that verse. It's in John chapter 3, verse 14. As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believed in him should not perish, but have eternal life. So, for every, every place in the Old Testament, or verse, there's, a, there's a, usually a New Testament mate to that verse, that when you read them together, you get the sense of it. You only read one verse, you're going to get misled every time. In fact, that usually is the way false prophets and false teachers lie to people. They will give them one verse, or even some cases, part of a verse, without, number one, the context of that verse, number two, without the context of the rest of the scriptures. They'll isolate a verse and say, this is, this is what you should believe. But you've got to read the rest of the Bible in order to understand. So in Ezekiel 2, verse 9, when I looked, behold, a hand was sent unto me, and lo, a roll of a book was thereon, therein. So he looked, and there's a hand coming down from heaven, just the hand, and he sees a scroll. Of, like they used to write. They used to write it on papyrus or vellum, which was animal skin, dried animal skin. Then they would roll it up to protect it. And that's what he has in his hand. And then he says, he spread it before me, which means he opened it up, and it was written within and without, exactly like Revelation 5. And there was written therein lamentations and mourning and woe. Moreover, in chapter 3, verse 1, he said unto me, Son of man, eat that thou findest. Eat this roll and go and speak unto the house of Israel. So I opened my mouth and he caused me to eat that roll. Now that's what you're doing right now. Your soul, not your, not your flesh, your soul is 
eating the Word of God. It is consuming and taking in the Word of God for nourishment, for spiritual nourishment, for spiritual growth. Verse 3, And he said unto me, Son of man, cause thy belly to eat, and fill thy bowels with this roll that I give thee. Then did I eat it, and it was in my mouth as honey for sweetness. Now, I want you to look up here on the screen. Because what I've got up here is, here's, here's DNA that's been rolled up it looks just like a scroll. Get my dot back here. When it's unrolled, it looks like this. And not only that, but it's made of two compounds, sugar and phosphorus. When Ezekiel and John both ate the book that was given to them, what did it taste like? Honey, for sweetness. And it's because that's what the Word of God is. It's sweet. Your DNA is made of sugar. Which if you were to have like a can of it, you could drink it. It would taste sweet. But it's also made of phosphorus. What does phosphorus do? Glows. It's light. So, David said in the Psalms, the entrance of thy words giveth light. You have light inside of you in John chapter 1. John was describing Jesus. He was that light that lighteth every man that cometh into the world. So literally, in every cell in your body, you have a book a rolled up book called DNA. It's made out of sugar, so it tastes sweet. And it's made out of phosphorus, which means it's lighted up. When Jacob was there at Bethel, and he laid his head down on the stone that he had for a pillow, he had a dream. And what was in that dream? A ladder, look at that, a ladder came down from heaven. What did he see on that ladder? The angels of God who are made out of light, the Bible says his ministers are a flaming fire, his angels, and they're going up and down the ladder, ascending, they're ascending and descending on the ladder. Jesus said in the Gospel of John to Nathaniel, I think it was, or Philip, he said, Hereafter shall you see the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man, meaning Christ. So the ladder that Jacob saw with the angels of God ascending and descending on it was none other than a form, a picture of Jesus Christ. But it was also a picture of of what DNA looks like when it's unrolled. It looks like a ladder. Now, on, these, on, these, on this ladder, and here's where it gets into, uh, in Revelation 5 and Ezekiel 2, both John and Ezekiel saw that the book that was in God's hand was written on both sides. The front and the back. Now, I'm going to take a few minutes and explain DNA and how it works. Okay, let me zoom in here a little bit. You have the two rungs of the ladder. And on this side of the ladder, you have these, uh, what's called bases. That stands for adenine. That stands for guanine. That's the T stands for thymine, the C stands for cytosine. But you don't have to remember those. Just think A, C, T, and G. Okay? Now, if you took the DNA ladder, notice that up here at the top you have A on one side and T on the other. That's because 
the rules are that A can only link with T. Okay? It's like if you have a round peg, what kind of hole does it go in? A round hole. Notice that C always links with G. Think of C as a square peg. Can you put a square peg in a round hole? No. So think of C as a square peg and G as a, as a square hole. They only fit together. You have A and T here, A and T there, C and G here, T and A here. It doesn't matter what order. G and C here, T and A here. So if it's A on one side, it has to be T on the other. Now here's what I'm trying to show you. That if you took this ladder of DNA or this little piece of DNA and you split it down the middle and took one side out and you had the other side in this hand, the scientists who know how to read DNA, who know the rules that if it's A here, it's got to be T here, if they read, if they're able to read this side of the DNA, they're also able to read this side of the DNA, and this side of the DNA says exactly what this side says. Does that make sense? Okay? So literally, on both sides of the DNA, the words are written out just like in the book that Ezekiel and John saw. Now remember, we've only known this since the 1950s. That's how old our knowledge is of how DNA is made. And yet, here's John writing the book of Revelation somewhere around A.D. 95, A.D. 96. Ezekiel is writing uh, his prophecy probably five, six hundred years before Christ. David, writing Psalm 139, in thy book while my members were written, he's writing that 3,000 years ago. And yet they are perfectly, it's like the scientists who study DNA could save a lot of money and just read the Bible because they would know then that everything about DNA is right here in this book. Everything is. We are gaining more and more knowledge each and every day. We got to the point around the year 2000 where they learned that they could read DNA and then President Bush signed an executive order that, um, I think it was an executive order, but he initiated what was called the Human Genome Project. And they were going to award money to whatever lab or whatever university was able to sequence the entire human genome. Every gene that makes up the human body, if they were able to read and sequence it and divide it all up into like chapters and verses and books, just like the Bible is, then they received a prize. I don't remember who won it. But they now know how to read DNA. So that sounds great. But now that they know how to read DNA, now they learn how to alter DNA. Change it. So some child was born with a gene that causes him to be severely anemic, meaning that he can never get a scrape, he can never get a sore, he can never fall on his knees because more than likely he'll bleed to death. He's not treated immediately. 
Well, if they do a DNA study while the baby is in utero, find out that that child has the gene turned off or turned on or whatever that is going to cause him to be anemic, you could have it aborted if you want. Or, worse, they could go in and change the DNA. They did it in China. Okay? Uh, currently, it is illegal in America. Currently. But I don't think that's going to last long. Because when they start laying out to all the pharmaceutical companies how they can use gene editing to cure this disease or to cure that disease or whatever. Sterling, you've had bladder cancer several times now. They keep going in, find little spots, they take them out. Okay? So something in your genetics is causing that. So they will tell you, we can fix that. So you will never have to worry about bladder cancer again. Okay? Now, you're, what, 84? Okay? More than likely, they probably wouldn't offer that to you. Okay? And he wouldn't take it. But let's say it was uh, Audrey back then who had cancer. And they said, we can fix her. We can rewrite her genome and completely eliminate whatever's causing that cancer and change and alter her DNA. Okay? That sounds good because we don't like it when children die. Trust me, it's no fun. No fun when a child dies. And at that time when our granddaughter died, I was very weak. And had they said, we can genetically alter her to where things will grow back normal the way they need to be, her heart and lungs and her diaphragm, she had a hernia in her diaphragm, we can genetically tweak that and it'll fix itself and the baby will live. That's when the decisions start getting harder to make. But I spent some time down in the woods the day after she died, me and God, and I told God it's okay that you have her. I'm fine with that. She's better off than she would be down here. Somebody say amen. Okay, but this is this is why this is why this is important. If they can change the Bible and think nothing of it, and they do. Why not alter DNA and say, we're going to cure diseases? Let me ask you a question. How many diseases do you know of that currently the pharmaceutical companies have a cure for? Huh? Which is it? Hepatitis C. Hepatitis C. Okay. But generally... What do they do, D? Treat the symptoms. Why? You can sell more pills treating symptoms than you can by curing a disease. Makes sense to me. Okay? So they get into DNA tweaking, and that's coming. That's coming. And you can say, well, I won't get that. I'll refuse that. And that will be okay until your insurance company sends you a letter and says, you have this disease. 
We offered you a cure for it. You declined it. We will no longer cover any problems related to your disease under your medical plan. In other words, they won't pay for doctor visits. They won't pay for your whatever medication you're taking. They won't pay for your operation. You're on your own. That's coming too. We, we've already seen that with the uh, COVID vaccine. If you don't take, and it wasn't the government. The government never forced anybody to take the vaccine. It was American Airlines, Southwest Airlines. It was uh, the theater, the railroad. It was uh, one of our followers, his wife, quit her job because they were going to. She worked at a university, and they were going to force all the faculty and staff to be vaccinated. And she said, "I don't want it." And they said, "If you're not vaccinated by such and such date, we're going to terminate you." It wasn't the government. It didn't have to be. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Yeah. See, I did I haven't had it. Others have, and they turned out fine. But some have it. So it reminds me of the swine flu shot. Back in the 70s. Swine flu shot was given I don't know how many people, and a bunch of people got real bad it, it crippled them it's like a form of polio from a bad vaccine so i get it i get it but this is where everything's going okay um so take a look at this now so you have the two rungs of the ladder the two legs of the ladder and in the middle, holding it all together, are these four bases. And these four bases, in a certain order, it's just like Morse code. Did you learn Morse in the Army? Never, you don't remember? You can do SOS though, right? Yeah. My flashlight does SOS, but anyway. But the way, the way DNA is encoded is almost exactly like Morse code. So let's say that this one right here, where's my dot, is supposed to be like the letter A. So it would be a dot and a dash. And this one here, supposed to be like the letter, well that's a letter A, because it doesn't matter if it's T on one side and A on the other, or A on one side and T on the other, it encodes the same. Here you have cytosine and guanine, and the combination of three of these in a row make up in what, what we would say would be an individual letter out of the book. Letters, when they're put together, make words. Words, when they're put together in the right sequence, make sentences. And that is exactly the way DNA, in, DNA has its own language structure. It has a set of sequences like Morse code that make letters. The letters in a certain order make words. The words in a certain order make sentences and you have right there a gene. And that gene does whatever that gene is supposed to do. Let's say that that gene 
Uh, makes your hair red. So we've got red hair in my family, and that means that they have a gene that turns their hair red and puts freckles on their faces. Okay? The two have to go together always. Well, I don't have that gene. Okay? Or it's turned off or something. So that's not in my book, but it is in somebody else's. Or let's say that gene uh, determines my bone growth and density. Or that gene is what gives me insulin to control the sugar that's in my blood that's being fed to all my cells. Or let's say that that gene or a group of genes um, is going to make my eyes or it's going to make my heart tissue or it's going to make uh, my toes or whatever. Every member of your body has a sequence of letters, words, and sentences that make up every single part of your body. Now, some of, the, some of the genes in your body, like I said last week, they're there, but for some reason, they don't do anything. Or it seems like they don't do anything. But they do. It just may not be time for them to do it yet. Just like some of the things that are in the Bible. The book of Revelation. There are things in the book of Revelation that have not happened yet. Does that mean that they're not going to happen and that we don't need the book of Revelation? No. We need this book because these things are awaiting a certain time in order to be turned on. Or, the way the Bible puts it, unsealed. And you have sealed genes in your body. When I first started working with Sterling, he had dark hair with just a little gray right around here like I do now. Okay? And Lisa would give us both a haircut and you couldn't hardly tell whose hair was who on the floor. Well, now she gives us a haircut and I'm going, Sterling, that's your hair. That ain't my hair. That's your hair. Why? Because at some point, the genes that were in his blood to turn his hair gray were sealed until he started reaching a certain age. And then they were unsealed, and now he's got what the Bible calls a hoary head. But that's the one that's blessed the most. Somebody say amen. The hoary heads have all the wisdom, which is why we need our older people in our church. Amen? Don't run them out. Keep them here. We need them. So is that under, does that make sense on how sort of how DNA works? By the way... DNA even has periods and paragraph markers. If you look in your Bible, who's got, in your Bible, you've got little, looks like a little letter P in front of some of the verses. Who has that? David does. Anybody else? Sometimes they won't put them in the newer Bible. Those are paragraph markers. That tells you that a new thought is started. In your DNA, the way your DNA is encoded, there's a piece of DNA called stop DNA. And what it is, it's the period at the end of a sentence. There's a machine that called uh, RNA polymerase that scans your DNA and it reads it. Now, how does it know whether or not this group of letters goes with this over here or it goes with this down here? It knows it because God put periods at the end of a gene sentence in your DNA. So the RNA polymerase, when it gets to stop DNA, it knows that that chapter and verse is over with. 
And now we're starting to read a new chapter and a new verse, or a new set of verses, until it sees another stop DNA code. And if it's found the one that it's looking for, then it will start reading that, transcribing it, making a copy of it, so that your body can make whatever it is that the genes spell out for. So think of it like this. I'm going to preach a message this morning on second chances. And it's based upon something that was brought to me this week, somebody's life. They're getting a second chance at life. Okay? Um, the bell messed me up. Where was I going with that? I don't remember. It's a lot. Can you give me a second chance? There's no way I'm going to remember this now. Oh, well. Boy, it was good, too. Oh, well. Lord, help me. Father, bless your word. We thank you for it. Thank you, Lord, for giving us all a second chance. Thank you, Lord, for writing our book for us. Lord, there's things about my body that I don't like that you put in me. But Lord, I realize that even the bad things were there for my own good. Because they've helped me. They've helped me pray more. They've helped me study more. They've helped me preach better. They've helped me be a better husband, a better father, a better minister. I'm not what I want to be yet. But I'm not who I used to be. And I thank you for that. So Lord, just bless your word today. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I